you've got a group of adolescents and they want to play D&D. What do you do about that? Hi, I, MGR, this is Player Base, which is a channel about the dynamics of play, the word being ludology. And the dynamics of play amongst adolescents in a tabletop role-playing game are very particular, and their needs are very particular. They're different from children, and which are anywhere from 2 to 11, and then from kids in between, middle schoolers from 11 to 14, which kind of have the needs of children and the needs of adolescents. Adolescents have a very particular set of desires, but also functional needs in terms of what a game requires in terms of their particular internal structures. And those are basically you need an authority figure who presents them quests, which they do on their own recognizance. This is very important because adolescents are used to being told what to do. But giving them the opportunity to execute on those commands, either to the letter of those commands or to adjust it on their own recognizance because of local information that the authority figure doesn't have, or to simply defy the authority figure and go their own way, that's really critical for adolescents because they're in the middle of developing their own locus of personal responsibility and personal authority and uh, personal agency. And in particular, in a group dynamic, they're learning how to work with others and vocalize and cooperate with regards to theirs and others' needs. So there's another aspect to this, which is you usually have to have some type of NPC who goes with them. And the reason for this is because very often there'll be one or two people who are more assertive in a group dynamic of adolescents and other kids who are not yet used to vocalizing or it doesn't feel safe for them to vocalize for many, many reasons. And so when you pick up on the fact that one of the characters wants to go a certain way and the other one wants to go another way but doesn't know how to say it, you have the NPC act as the talking stick. Very carefully, the NPC does not make decisions but simply says, oh, there's this other aspect to this, maybe some of us want to do this, and then you let them work it out together. Because developing group dynamics is a key aspect to their burgeoning social awareness. And just as the assertive kids need to learn how to listen to the kids who are not so assertive, the not so assertive kids need to learn how to speak to people who are assertive within their peer group, to say nothing of authority figures. And you know, with regards to the information that you give them when you send them out on their own recognizance, let's say they have to gather magical herbs for some wizard. And when they get there, the local tribe of gnomes or fairies are subsistence farmers and those magical herbs are an essential part of their diet. That gives the teenagers that you sent out there the chance to either negotiate some type of work around or you know crop sharing with the local fairies and gnomes or to just slaughter them and take it or to just go back to the wizard and be like yeah we can't do that that's not within the framework of our personal ethics that gives them the chance to make that decision on their own and you know they have to pay the consequences whatever the wizard is like and however the wizard responds to that sort of thing those things have to be taken into account but you have to encourage them to make their own decisions and for them to work with each other. And that's really basically it. So, hope that helps. I am going to look at the comments and see uh, how effective it was for you. And also, if you needed more information, give me more information. But for now, uh, that's everything. I'm GR, this is player base, and uh, TTFN.